and much, much more. Mr Chairman. Honourable Peter Dunn. Mr Chairman, can I thank those members who have contributed to the debate thus far? Can I acknowledge particularly the Chair of the Health Select Committee, thank him for the contribution that he makes and the advice that his committee has delivered both on the report on the financial review but also more generally. The fact is, as the member rightly pointed out, the last year has seen significant additional achievement in the area of health. During the time that this government has been in office, $1.5 billion extra spending allocated to the health sector. I heard the member, and I'll come to her point shortly, say many times by way of interjection, what about prevention? And I agree with her, prevention is important, but so too is providing effective care for those who've moved beyond the stage of prevention. That's why we've seen 800 extra doctors employed in hospitals, over 2,000 more nurses. It's why we're seeing new elective theatres being developed to make sure that people can see a real tangible progress and that some of the more fundamental and basic health concerns that arise can be dealt with effectively. Now there was an interchange during the debate, Mr Chairman, about tobacco policy. Dr Hutchison rightly pointed out that during the last year we've seen significant increases in the excise duty, which we all know will have a significant profound downward impact on the level of consumption. We're also seeing now about 90% of hospitalised patients being given help and advice to quit smoking. And my colleague, the Minister of Justice, reminded me as she left the House after her estimate was being considered that during her time as the Minister of Corrections, prisons were made smoke-free and around 6,000 prison inmates who were previously smokers had to confront giving up that particular habit. So when the member says nothing much has been done, I would say in response a considerable amount has been achieved. Mr Chairman, there are a number of other areas where great progress has been made in health. Over the last three years there has been a $180 million increase in funding for Pharmac and what that has seen is some of the more difficult and rare cases in the areas of some of the cancers, diseases like Crohn's disease, Alzheimer's disease, are now getting the medicines that they need to be able to give people a better standard of living, a greater opportunity for the future and also some real prospect. And all of this is being achieved against a background of two important things. The demand for health services in the Western world is insatiable. No matter what the level of provision, people rightly and understandably are going to demand more. And as the march of technology increases, that is going to increase as well. And Mr Chairman, we're operating against that general backdrop, but also in an environment of the greatest economic crisis to hit the world since the Great Depression, where every dollar has to be managed with care, where every dollar has to be really scrutinised in terms of the value it achieves for the, the, the spend involved. And I think it's great that we now see, against that backdrop, over 90% of patients who report to emergency departments discharged within six hours. It's great to see people who require radiation therapy We're getting gold standard world-class treatment within a four-week period. It's great to see the immunisation targets being increased and achieved. It's good to see that we're getting a reduction in a lot of the duplication and wasteful and inefficient expenditure in back office services and much more concentration, collaboration and working together to achieve positive outcomes. I'm delighted, and again I come back to the prevention theme that the Labour member spoke of, that we are seeing extensions of the free care hours for under sixes that we're seeing the extension also for the number of children able to get the before for a school check. And that is early intervention of the highest order. That we're seeing more uh, well-child visits, home visits for at-risk mums. Again, a positive benefit. Mr Chairman, there is always a long way to go in health. People demand better services all the time. But this government and this administration has seen dramatic improvements in the status of the health of New Zealanders over the last three years. And I acknowledge the contribution of the Minister in leading this role, and I acknowledge the contribution of his colleagues in helping him achieve it. Mr Speaker, New Zealanders' health is in good hands.
The question is that the report of the Health Committee on the 2010-11 financial year of the Ministry of Health be noted. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary no, the ayes have it.